Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, and to those out there, I'm a King James Bible believer. And God showed me a couple verses that were pretty interesting. So, yes, we'll be talking about the Godhead versus the Trinity today. It's just a quick video to throw a couple verses out that God showed me in my um, Bible reading that I do every day. And sometimes I come across them with other people's studies as well. So, the first verse I want to talk to you guys about is John 14, verse 21. Okay. Actually, no, it's the wrong one. Here's the right one. I clicked on the wrong one. Okay. See, I'm not perfect. Uh, Jesus answered and said unto him, let's get up here and get the right one. Okay, John 14. <laughs> let's start over there. Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ out there, and those that are watching, um, King James Bible Believer. God showed me a couple of verses I thought were pretty neat and amazing. Um, we're going to be talking about the Godhead versus the Trinity, and let's just dive right into it. We are going to start out in John 14, verse 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. We always use that verse because it's truth to say that if you truly because truly love Jesus Christ, you're going to keep his perfect written word. And so many people out there about, like, you know, it's all about feelings and opinions. And if I feel like I love Jesus, and, and you know, it's just a, a, what is it, burning in the bosom. Uh, I just feel it in here that I love Jesus. Well, the Bible says if you truly love Jesus, you're going to keep his written word. And we read the whole thing, but that first part we'll read because that's mainly what we're focusing on, and then we'll just read the other part real quick. But let's keep reading the other part. And my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Now, those of us that believe in the Godhead, do you do you understand what you just what we just read right there? And my Father will love him, God the Father. There's only one God, capital G God, the Father, 1 Corinthians 8, 6. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. This is the Godhead, people, uh, brothers and sisters of Christ. It's the Godhead. Okay, we have the Holy Spirit in us. Uh, Jesus talks about uh, sent God sending a comforter to be in us. And he talks about him, I will be in you, I will be with you. We have the Holy Spirit in us. So right here it's saying that God the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son of God the Father, both of them are going to be with us. The Holy Spirit's what's with us. They're all one and the same. God, Jesus isn't physically in us. It's because they're all one and the same. Yes, it's body, soul, spirit, but Jesus is God the Father. God the Father is the Holy Spirit, and Jesus is the Holy Spirit. They're all one. I read this and said, Lord, I've read this a million times, and I never really caught on to that. We will come unto him and make our abode with him. Now, the second part of this, you know, Remember, we will come and make our abode with him. We're talking about loving Jesus, a man love me. Now, what I'm about to show you has nothing, I'm not saying it's works to be saved, but another part God showed me, which we're kind of trailing off from the Godhead versus the Trinity, is the proof that there's a changed life. Okay, after salvation, there's a changed life. You're going to love Jesus. You're going to do your best to keep his perfect written word. Why is that? Uh, we are going to go to 1 Corinthians 16, 22. Let me get that to the top. That's as far as it goes. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranatha. Okay. You're not doing works to be saved, but good works to change life after salvation is proof that you love Jesus Christ. It's proof that you are saved. Because if you don't love Jesus Christ, 
let him be anathema maranatha. And I've talked into other ones. Basically, it's saying God come come and, and curse these people. Anybody that does not love Jesus Christ, come down here and curse them. Okay? You don't say that about saved sinners. So I thought those two things were really neat here. God showing more that God had all through the Bible as brothers and sisters out there in Christ are reading the Bible. They're like, because the Trinity versus the Godhead is becoming a big thing. Um, you're learning things, and it's like I'm starting to see it here in my book, Bible. Like I use the color blue for the Godhead, and I'm like, I gotta highlight this because I, it's talking about the Godhead. It's showing how the parts of the Godhead, whether it's talking about Jesus and the Father being one, or Jesus and the Holy Spirit being one, or all three being one, because they're all three one. But it's just pretty amazing when you come across something like that, and then you highlight it blue. So every time you come across it, you're like, thank you, Lord, for showing me that. So that's the first part. This right here shows that, you know, it's God. It's not God in three persons. It's not God the Father, God, lowercase g, God the Son, lowercase g, God the Holy Spirit. Jesus is God because he's the Father. There's only one capital G, God the Father. That's why I always put a lowercase g before Jesus because what they worship, the Trinity people, they worship a false Jesus. They worship Satan. Okay? There's only two sides, Jesus or Satan. There's Jesus Christ, Antichrist. Okay? That's why, because I had a sister Christ ask me, and I need to be more um, straightforward or explain myself better sometimes. I always say lowercase g, God, the Son, because I do believe Jesus is God, but in order for him to be a capital G God, he has to be the Father. And the Godhead teaches that Jesus and God the Father are one. This right here shows it again that the three are one. They're not separate persons. They're all one person. Jesus is the person of Godhead. And I'm, I'm jumping ahead because the next verse that God showed me, which was pretty amazing. Right here, we're going to go through the definition of person again. Okay. The Trinity people hate you know, having a foundation for a definition. They like to make up their own definitions. The Webster's 1828 Dictionary is based off the King James Bible, not the other way around. Okay. Now, definition number one and the rest use the same definition number one, but it gets more specific, like person, like man, woman, child. But a person, as you read, an individual human being consisting of, consisting of body and a soul, and we apply it to the word, we apply the word to a living being only. Spirit. The Old Testament kept saying they yielded up the ghost. Jesus yielded up the ghost when he died. So when you're living, you have a spirit in you. When you're dead, it leaves you. So you have a, a person has a body, soul, and spirit, and they cannot duck this because the only person of the Godhead is Jesus Christ. Only Jesus Christ is referenced as a person because he has a body, Jesus. He has a soul, God the Father, and he has a spirit, the Holy Ghost. Knowing this, we, God, we, who, we who believe in the King James Bible, the true Godhead, we're like, yeah, that's you know common sense. That's the definition. I didn't know it until I truly looked it up. A lot of people that stood for the Trinity, I, I showed them this definition, and by definition, they stopped using God in three persons. They stood back and went, you know what? The Trinity is false. It's Godhead. The title for God is Godhead. Trinity is the title for Satan. Okay? It's a pagan God. But let's get to the verse that God showed me. I'm excited because it was a really good verse. Okay? Luke 24. We are going to start at 36. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said, saith unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and affrighted, and supposed that they had seen a spirit. Remember that. They, they thought they saw a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are ye troubled? And why, do you th and why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me, and see. For a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. 
And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of a broiled fish and a honeycomb, and he took it, and he did eat before them. In other words, the Spirit doesn't eat. Why? Because right here Jesus just says in verse 39, and this was the big one, For Spirit hath not flesh and bones. What do the Trinity people do with that? Well, you know, I, I don't like to be mocking, I apologize. It's just, I've had them give me definitions saying that, you know, a person is someone who has a will of his own and emotions of his own and thoughts of his own, you know, will, and they start making up their own definitions. Throughout the whole Bible, a person has a body, soul, and spirit. Every time. Okay? Now, what do they do with that? A spirit hath not flesh and bones. They say that the Holy Spirit is a person. That the Holy Spirit has a body, soul, and spirit of his own. They can say they don't until they're blue in the face. If they say person for the Holy Spirit, they're saying that he has a body, soul, and spirit of his own. How do you reconcile that verse with calling the Holy Spirit a person? When they say the Holy Spirit's a person and they ignore us, brothers and sisters in Christ, that stand for the Godhead, what they're doing is they're calling Jesus a liar. And if you watch a lot of these false ministries, uh, they call Jesus a liar a lot. Uh, it's not just with this. But God showed me this uh, through a brother's teaching. He came across this verse, and I'm like, God's like just, you know, kind of, I always say, he pricked my heart <laughs> and said, hey, Look at that and read it. Uh, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones. In other words, the Holy Spirit can't be a person. It doesn't have a body of its own. Jesus is the body. It doesn't have a soul of its own. The, uh, God the Father is the soul. Okay. So we saw a verse that once again verifies the true Godhead. God the Father, Jesus Christ, the Son of God the Father, and the Holy Spirit of God the Father. And these three are one. Only one God, the Father. So if Jesus is not the Father, he's not God. Okay? And if Jesus and God is not the Holy Spirit, then we don't serve a living God. We serve a dead one. If they're all separate, God the Father is, is, dead, is a dead God. The Holy Spirit is why we worship a living God. So this was just pretty amazing, pretty neat. I wanted to share it with the brothers and sisters in Christ. I keep coming across them. I keep marking them in my book, highlighting everything in blue that has to do with the Godhead. And I'm realizing I'm coming across so much stuff in the Bible that we never even thought to look at that God's showing me and probably showing you too. And it's just pretty amazing. So remember, Jesus Christ himself said, a spirit has not flesh and bones. Okay? And remember, uh, right here, when Jesus answered and said, if a man loved me, uh, down here, we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Okay? You have Jesus in you. You have God the Father in you. But you have the Holy Spirit in you. Why? How does this work? I don't know. Great is the mystery of godliness. But the three are one. There's only one God, not three gods. So I will see you in the next video.